Hello everyone, I hope you can all hear me. Um, it's great to see so many of you attending today and thank you for joining me for the webinar on how to make a tier four general student visa application from outside of the UK. So this presentation will take approximately 15 minutes. Uh, feel free to ask questions as we go along, but I will be saving them till the end. We'll have a bit of a Q&A session at the end where I'll answer your questions. Okay, let's start. So just to introduce myself, my name is Carrie McMinn. I'm one of the student advisors for immigration and finance here at SOAS, University of London. Um, we also have my colleague, John Hitchman, um, who is also another advisor. We are your contacts for anything related to your visa application and any immigration related questions you have um, about your studies in the UK. Okay, so everything that I talk about today is available online. So this is the, um, the link to our online guidance. Um, this is a very comprehensive guidance that will go into a lot more detail than I will be able to cover today. And so please do make sure that you take a good um, snap snapshot of that and make sure you read this before you make your tier four visa application. Okay, let's get started. So today I'm gonna to cover a number of things. So we're gonna look at how, where, and when you should apply for your tier four visa. We're also going to talk about the different documents you might need. And we're also going to talk about money. So how much money you will need to show in your bank account in order to study in the UK. We're also going to talk about family. So your dependents, there may be some of you out there who have a family that you're hoping to have join you in the UK for your study. So we have a few slides on that. And as I say, we'll have plenty of time at the end for questions. OK, so let's start with um, this section here. So who can apply, how to apply? where can I apply and when should I apply? Okay, so who can apply? So you must have accepted an unconditional offer at SOAS before you can apply for your tier four visa. In order to apply for a tier four visa, you'll also need to have secured your 40 points. So your 40 points that you need to be granted a tier four visa. So that 40 points breaks down into two sections. So you have your 30 points for your CAS, your confirmation of acceptance for studies which is an electronic document that will be assigned to you containing a unique reference number. And that reference number you will need to put onto your visa application so that they can link your application to your place um, at SOAS. The 10 points, the remaining 10 points is for your maintenance. So demonstrating that you have enough money to support yourself for the duration of your studies here in the UK. Okay, so how do I apply? So the application process is an online application process, which makes it nice and smooth uh, process. Um, the application itself also comprises of the immigration health surcharge, which is a mandatory uh, payment that you make at the beginning, uh, make a, as part of your visa application. And this charge is currently £300 per year of leave granted. OK, and the immigration health surcharge will um, allow, enable you to have access to the NHS while you're studying for the duration of your studies in the UK. The application fee itself, so the visa application fee, is currently £348 for a standard application. And typically applications will take 15 working days to process. Uh, but it's always good to allow yourself a little bit of extra time just in case there are any unforeseen delays. The priority service or premium service um, will cost you £568 and that will guarantee, or well not guarantee, but it will hope to um, get your visa processed within five working days. So um, for those of you who are maybe running out of time, that's um, a good option. But the idea is that you plan well in advance so that you can make use of the standard 15 day service. You'll also need to upload your supporting documents, which we're going to talk about a bit later on. Um, and you'll have to attend a biometric appointment. So this is the appointment where you give your biometric data, uh, your fingerprint data, and um, a photo of yourselves, uh, so that this information can be used on your biometric residence permit, which we'll also talk about a bit later on. As part of the application process, you will also need to attend an interview. So this is a short interview that will ask you about sort of your studies in the UK, why you've chosen SOAS, why you want to study the, the, the uh, course that you've chosen. It'll also talk about sort of maybe ask you about how you're able to finance your studies in the UK and it, 
also ask you a little about a little bit about your um, your career aspirations, what you plan to do with your qualification once you've um, got it from SOAS. There will be people out there that need to do a TB test um, in order to apply for their visa. So make sure that you do check the information on the gov.uk website. We will list um, those from um, certain countries that will need to have that test done before they apply for their visa. So do make sure you check that web link out. OK, so where can I apply? So you can apply in your country of nationality or where on the country where you are living. So, for example, you might be currently working or studying in another country. Um, so the what the immigration rules allow allow for applications to be made from the countries where you are currently living. Um, you'll need to book an appointment at the end of the online application in order to make your visa application. And please make sure you do read the instructions in full before you go along to your appointment, um, because, you know, there'll be a very strict parameters for that appointment. You don't want to make sure that you're fully prepared. Um, do make sure that you go to your biometric appointment and your interview, because that's part of the visa application process. If you fail to attend that part of the application process, your application could be refused or deemed invalid. So be really careful with that. Once you've gone through this process and hopefully your visas are all uh, granted and with you, then you'll be issued with a 30 day visa vignette, which will be a sticker endorsed in your in your passport. Um, and within that time, you're expected to travel to the UK, your entry to the UK. Um, once you've entered the UK, you can then collect your biometric residence permit. So this is the card that will contain your biometric data, which you would have provided at your appointment. Um, and it will also contain the conditions of your visa. So it will say how long your visa is valid for and how many hours of work you will be allowed to do in the UK. And it also confirms your entitlement to use the NHS and care, healthcare services. So it's really, really, really important document. It's also really important that you keep this document safe and that you make sure you don't lose it because um, the process to replace it can be quite lengthy and um, at, and will cost you money as well. So be really careful with that document. It's, a, it's as important as your passport. OK, so when should you apply? So you can apply up to three months before the start of your course. If you apply any earlier than that, your visa application will be refused. So it's very important that you um, are careful with your dates. So no more than three months before the official start date of your programme. And the official start of your programme will be clearly labelled on your CAS, your Confirmation of Acceptance of Studies. So do check that date very carefully. It's also important that you have all your documents ready, all your academic qualifications. Um, if you need to submit an English language qualification, for example, make sure you have all that in place before you apply. And also make sure that you can meet the financial requirements um, and in the correct way. So that your documents are in the correct format before you apply. So all those requirements must be in place before you submit and pay for that application. OK, so now we're going to talk a little bit about what documents you need. So everybody will need a valid passport. Um, everybody will need a CAS. So that's your, cause that gets you your 30 points for your CAS. And the CAS document, as I say, is an electronic document. And it will contain all the details of your programmes, what course you're doing, what level the programme is, how much your course um, is costing you. Um, and it also lists all your qualifications. So what you need to show in order to get your visa. It's a really important document. It's really important that you check the information on your CAS as well carefully before you apply for your visa. If you see anything on there that looks incorrect, um, then it's really, really um, important that you have it corrected with us, with SOAS, before you apply for your visa so that you know you're submitting all the correct information first time. So the qualifications, as I say, will be listed on your CAS. So that, for example, could be an undergraduate degree certificate if you're going on to a master's, for example, or a master's certificate if you're going on to a PhD. So uh, normally it's your qualifications that you have to have in order to uh, be made an offer on a programme at SOAS. You also may need to prove your English language ability. So it could be an IELTS certificate that you need to submit, or it may be that the university has made their own assessment of your English language and they will have a statement on your CAS to explain how they have done this. So again, read the information on your CAS very carefully before you submit your visa application. Proof of maintenance is possibly 
the most important bit. So making sure that your maintenance is in the correct format. Uh, so that could be a bank statement or a bank letter or um, a passbook, um, proving that you have enough money to support yourself in the UK. So typically those documents have to have your name, um, the account number, the date of the statement, um, the name and logo of the bank, the financial institution, and the amount of money available to you. So just making sure that you check our guidance carefully and make use of our finance checker that we have built to help you to check your own bank documents carefully. So make sure that you use all those tools to ensure your documents are looking, are looking good. Okay. If you are from um, what we call a low, uh, what the Home Office deem a low risk country, so you are a low risk national, um, and you are applying for a tier four visa, you do you do not need to include your academic and financial documents with your application. So you are exempt from having to produce these documents as part of your visa application. However, um, as part of the application, you are agreeing to a declaration confirming that you have these required documents and required funds. And so it's really important that you do have that in place before you make your visa application. Um, the UK Visas and Immigration, so Home Office, will um, do reserve the right to request those documents from you at any point um, of the application process if they want to. Um, and so if you are unable to provide those on request, then this could result in a refusal of your visa. So please be very careful with that. Well, one last thing to say about the proof of main is just making sure that your documents are dated within the last 31 days. So there is a requirement for your documents to be nice and new and up to date. OK, so we're going to talk about that, about maintenance in a bit more detail. So how much will you need to show? So if your programme is longer than eight months, which is normally the case if you're doing an undergraduate or a one year master's, um, you will need to show the full tuition fee for the first, or if it's a master's programme, but the whole master's programme, or if it's an undergraduate qualification, it will be for the first academic year. So full fees for the first academic year, plus £11,385 in maintenance or living expenses. So this is the money that the Home Office expects you to have in order in able to live in the UK, pay rent, uh, pay your daily, day, daily expenses, course costs, etc. If your program is shorter than eight months, then again, it's the full fee for the program and £1,265 for each month of your program or partial month of your program. So be really careful with that. If your course sort of is, for example, six months and a week, um, you will need to see your maintenance requirement for seven months. OK, so they will count that partial month. If you've paid your fees in advance or you've paid some of your fees in advance, then this really should be receipted on the CAS, on the Confirmation of Acceptance of Studies. Um, if you've paid in paid in full, it will say paid and you'll, you'll see sort of the receipt of your of the tuition fees you, you've made. So make sure that that um, accurately reflects your situation before you apply. It may be that you're sponsored by um, an official financial sponsor, in which case you will, and this could be, for example, um, a sponsor from your home government or a university overseas or in the UK um, or an international company or scholarship agency. So you must provide a letter from your sponsor confirming the details of your sponsorship, so how much money they are spot they are giving you and how long that money is to last you, sort of duration of that sponsorship. And that letter must be dated within the last six months and stamped by the sponsor. Again, our online guidance has lots of um, information on that. Um, and it's also included in our finance checker. So do make sure that you, you, you look at that. Um, you may also be using a student loan or an educational loan, they sometimes refer to it. So if you are supporting yourself financially with a student or educational loan, this loan must be held in your own name. OK, um, and the again, the loan letter must be dated no more than six months before the date of your application. OK, there must also be no conditions on the release of your loan. Um, so just be really mindful of that. And again, check our guidance for full details on that. Um, so you, if you're if you are receiving sponsorship or you are in receipt of an educational loan, 
but it doesn't cover your full fees and maintenance costs, then it's really important that anything remaining is shown in your own bank account or a parent's bank account. You can also use your parent's bank account. Um, so you must be covering the full amount. So it might maybe that you're using two different sources to show that. So touching on that again, so your money can also be shown in your parents account um, or your um, or your legal guardian, if you have an official legal guardian. Um, so if you are to use your your parents account, then you must also submit your original birth certificate confirming the relationship or a certificate of adoption if that's um, what you need to show um, and a court document if you have a, a legal guardian. So you must have an official court document if you are using funds in a legal guardian's name. If you've got any questions on that, you can always contact our services for further information. OK, um, again, and the most important bit, your funds must be held for at least 28 days before the date of your application. So it must be held consistently without falling, even by a penny, for the last 28 days before you submit your application. Um, Maintenance is one of the most common reasons for a visa to be refused and they can be easily avoided if um, you're just very full with reading the guidance and making sure the money has been held for the right period. OK, so just a quick note about studying part time. It's now possible to study a postgraduate course in the UK on a tier four visa um, part time, which is, is very new. This has been around for maybe just the best part of a year. The only issue with that is that you won't be allowed to work if you decide to be a part time tier four student in the UK. So if you are thinking of doing some part time work while you're studying or you just want the experience of working in the UK, then unfortunately studying part time won't allow you to do that. So be mindful of that. It may also affect um, caps on studies. So the, the time in which you can study in the UK. Um, you can also not bring your family members, unfortunately, so your dependents, that's your spouse, civil partner, unmarried partner of more than two years or children under the age of 18. You won't be able to bring, unfortunately, your dependents with you if you're studying part time. So again, please be mindful of that. OK, so touching on family again, so um, full time postgraduate students who are studying for more than nine months. Or if you're a government sponsored student and you are here for more than six months, um, you can, if you wish, um, have your husband, wife, unmarried partner or children under the age of 18. Um, you can they can apply for visas to join you, dependent visas to join the, you in the UK for the duration of your studies. Now, your dependents will have their own set maintenance requirements, which currently stands at £7,605 per dependent. Um, and again, that would be for courses of over eight months. If your course is, you know, is less than six months, your government sponsored, then it's £845 per month or partial month. So do make sure that you check the, your, the dates of your course very carefully. OK, so that I've come to the end of my um, session. Um, really looking forward to seeing you all at SOAS. Um, and now we've got plenty of time to have some questions. So the CAS is issued once you have met the conditions of your offer. So you have to have an unconditional offer um, and have met all the conditions of that offer. You will need to physically request your CAS via your admissions team. So it would be master's, master's admissions if you're doing a postgraduate level qualification or undergraduate admissions. Um, and normally those CASs are issued like I say, three months prior to the start date of your programme. And the reason why that's normally is because we don't want students to accidentally uh, submit applications too soon because that will result in a visa refusal. So the CASIs, as I say, will be issued by email once you've requested them and once you've met all the conditions of your offer. So we've got a question here. Is the proof of maintenance required for a part time two year programme the same? So if you are doing a part time, tier four program, their maintenance requirements are the same. So it's up to a maximum of, of the nine months, so 11385 for your maintenance requirement. So how long will the CAS be issued after I was granted? OK, so the CAS, so the, your CAS will be, how long will the CAS will be issued? Um, so if you mean um, how long will it take to have your CAS, well, that will be um, that will be done by the admissions team. So they'll have um, they'll be doing those as quickly as possible. If we're talking about the duration of the CAS, um, it will cover the, the duration of the course, 
Okay, so if you're doing a three graduate program, your CAS will cover for the, the full three years. Again, if you're doing a, a part time master's over two years, it would cover the full two years. So can you pay a partial payment of fee and then apply for your visa? Um, so if you're referring to the tuition fees, um, then yes, you don't have to pay your full tuition fees in full before you apply for your visa, but you can pay, you can if you wish, or you pay part of it, but whatever you have remaining of your tuition fees, you must show that in your maintenance requirement. If I've misunderstood your question there, apologies, um, you could also always um, email again. So if someone's been rejected for a visit visa in the UK, will it have any connection to getting your tier four visa? That's a really, really good question. If you have had a previous visa refusal in any visa category, but be it a visit visa or a tier four visa or a work visa, for example, then you must declare it on your visa application form. That's really, really important. So the application form will ask you to declare any previous uh, re visa refusals you've had and provide an explanation. As long as you're very clear and honest about your immigration history, then um, that should that should be enough for them to process your application. I'm afraid no visa is guaranteed, but as long as you're very um, honest on your application, they will take all of that into consideration. OK, so regarding financial documents, how can we prove the 28 day money inside by using a certificate of deposit? Again, that's a really, really good question. Certificate of deposits come with their own set of requirements. And there is guidance um, on the Home Office website about how certificates of deposit should look. So essentially, those deposits should be dated no more than 31 days prior to submitting the visa application. And they must, the, the date of the deposit must be at least 28 days prior to the issue of the certificate. So as long as the certificate of deposit clearly shows that the money was uh, deposited more than 28 days ago, that should be fine. But again, there's lots of guidance on specifically how fixed deposits should look. So do look at that. Um, lots of questions coming through here, so sorry if I miss a few of them. So um, just to verify, the health surcharge is charged £3 every year. If your programme is two years, it will be £600. That's uh, correct. So it's to do, remember, it's to do with the the grant, uh, the, the leave that you're granted, not the year of the course. So if you're doing a two year programme, will actually be in the UK for longer than two years because you'll get your month at the beginning of the programme and four months at the end of the programme. So you could be uh, paying more than the £600, so be careful with that. Hello, I have two questions. A student visa will require IELTS UK VI certificate, right? There's lots of different English language qualifications um, or ways that the English language can be assessed. So the university can assess it uh, IELTS is the typical one that you would see, but the university can also assess your English language in different ways. So you need to look at your CAS and see how your English language has been assessed in order to gain entry onto the programme. OK, so I applied for a scholarship this evening. This evening I should receive the confirmation letter end of June. I think by providing a letter that I should receive the award scholarship should be fine um well this again as i say the scholarship will state how much money it's covering um so if the scholarship your, your evening scholarship covers all your tuition fees for at least the first academic year and the 11385 in living expenses then that should be enough for your visa application if it doesn't cover it all then you would need to provide extra documents OK, so how about visa applications for a PhD? Is it only one year school's fees? Yes. So again, with PhDs, you'll get a CAS for uh, three or four years, um, depending on the programme. Uh, but you only need to show the, the tuition fee amount for the first academic year. That's the same for all programmes. OK, is bank statement of 31 days more than enough for a tier four? Visa. So the bank statement, just to clarify, so the bank statement you use or the bank letter that you use or the document uh, for personal savings and current accounts needs to be dated no more than 31 days prior to the date of your application. But the funds, the transaction history must cover the required 28 days, consecutive 28 days. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't suggest putting in a bank document that is exactly 31 days old. The newer, the better. So ideally, a week old would be would be better. 
Symmetric appointment and interview, will they take place in your home country? Yes, so uh, normally uh, you would be attending your biometric appointment, your interview, processing your visa application in your home country or the country in which you are living. However, there are some countries whereby there is no visa application centre in your actual country, but they should give you um, your options of where you'll be able to carry that out. That only applies to, to very few countries. If that applies to you, then there should be clear guidance on where you can do this. And if you're unsure, again, just um, contact us for help if you need help navigating the websites. How soon can we come to London after the visa is issued? Again, that's a really, really good question. So you can come to the UK up to one month prior to the start of your undergraduate program, masters or PhD program, exactly one month. So um, if you, your, the visa vignette that you are issued in your passport, which we spoke about earlier, um, that will have the date by which you can enter the UK, so it will have an issue date. So just check the dates on, on that carefully. If I applied for a tier four visa in the UK previously, but did not use it as I deferred my studies, will it affect my current visa application? Um, not necessarily, but that's quite a, quite a complex question. So I would recommend you dropping us an email to talk about that in a bit more detail so that we can advise you more accurately on that. Um, our contact information is available in our guide, our online guide that we, I promoted at the beginning of our talk. Okay, so there is information showing that as a US citizen a visa is not required but from what I can tell that applies for courses that are six months is that correct that is indeed correct if you're a US citizen specifically um, and you're coming to the UK for, for less than six months so maybe you're doing um, a study abroad unit or um, a short course for example then um, you can request your permission to study on entry to the UK so that is very very specific to, to short courses. If you are a US citizen um, and you are doing um, a, a full master's programme or an undergraduate programme, PhD programme, you will need to apply for a tier four visa. Okay, are you allowed to travel within 30 days after arriving in the UK? I have a wedding in Dublin. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you, you, ideally, once you've travelled to the UK, you've entered the UK, you've collected your biometric residence permit, you've activated your leave in the UK. If you have to do a trip, in that time then that shouldn't be a problem as long as you've got your brp card but please be mindful that obviously um when once your course has started we do expect you to be um you know meeting your enrollment deadlines and participating in your program but as long as you've got your brp card and your permission to to, to travel in and out then that's fine so regarding the bank statements 28 days from the day i deposit the required money so the yeah so the bank statement just says that you, you need to have at least 28 days maintaining your funds before you apply for your visa if you've had your money for four five months that's brilliant but the minimum requirement is 28 days before you apply for your visa so do make sure that you plan that accordingly okay so a question about dependent visas so 7605 for dependent is the total maintenance out for the entire visa duration so that's correct so if you've got one dependent then it's £7,605 for that dependent. Oh, just remember that your dependents will also have a visa fee to pay and they'll also be subject to the immigration health surcharge. You do need to factor in those additional costs as well. But the 7605 per dependent um, is fine for the duration of um, of the time in the UK. So if, if you are an under if you are a master's student, you're coming for a year, that will be the, the fee for the year. So as a dual citizen, US and Kenya, living in Kenya, can my visa application still be as a US citizen? Yes, it absolutely can. If you've got a US passport and a Kenyan passport, you can choose one you use. I would suggest using the, the US passport as your application would be considered low risk. Um, that's not a problem. Any questions you have about English language are best put to your admissions team as they will be able to explain to you what language requirement or what IELTS results are suitable uh, for your programme. So please go directly to your admissions team um, for full details 
on English language requirements and what your course needs in order you to successfully um, secure your place and also successfully get your visa. OK, so can I come to London before 30 days if I have a tourist visa? You must activate your tier four visa on entry to the UK. It's not possible to come to the UK earlier than that and uh, move on to your onto your next visa. So you must be activating your tier four visa on entry to the UK once it's valid to use. Okay, my employer will be my sponsor for tuition fee and maintenance. Do I still need to show bank statements? Okay, be really careful with that one, because remember, official financial sponsorship can only be from um, your government, an international organisation, university or scholarship agency. So if your employer is not defined as an international agency or an international organisation, then it may be that you won't be able to use um, your employer as your sponsor. So do be very careful with that. I mean, if your employer is, if, if your if, it, if, it, if your employer does not meet the conditions of an official financial sponsor, then that money will need to be given to you um, in order to be held in your own name for the required 28 day period. That's a really good question. Thank you for that one. Yeah, there's lots of really good questions about sponsorship documents. And um, I would just urge you again to read the, our guidance, our online guidance. We cover official financial sponsorship and um, scholarship documents in quite a lot of detail. Um, so please do refer to that guidance because um, there are quite a few questions here to do with that. If, again, if you have any queries, um, you can always send us an email. So is there a typical format of for parent consent form? Oh, thank you for that question. I don't think I touched on that in too much detail. So if you are using your parents' bank documents to support your visa application, you will need a letter from them saying that they are happy to you that saying that they are happy to use their finances to support yourself in the UK. There's no sort of standard format for how that letter should look, but I would just keep it simple. So make sure it's got the date on it, the, the full name of your parents, um, confirming what the relationship is between you and the account holder, for example, your father or your mother, um, and just a line saying that they're happy for you to use um, their funds for the duration of your studies in the UK. Make sure that letter is also signed by the person named on the account. Hopefully that answers your question. The CAS can be directly requested from the SAS Finance Department. No, the CAS comes from admissions. So just be mindful of that. So the CAS you can request and that will be produced for you via your admissions team, your relevant admissions team. So that won't come from the finance department directly. So if I pay the thousand pounds as needed to accept the unconditional offer, would I get the thousand pound back? So the thousand pound deposit um, would be is, is part of the tuition fee. So if you've paid a thousand pounds towards your tuition fees already, that will be receipted on the CAS as a thousand pounds made towards your tuition fees. As it, so going back to the visa application fee itself, so the 348 is the standard visa fee. So that will uh, mean that your application is processed in approximately 15 working days. If you pay the additional fee, um, which is approximately £568, then that is the premium service, what will mean you'll get a you should have your application processed within five days. Now, uh, the visa application, VSF Global, will have lots of different additional add-ons that you can pay for if you wish. Uh, so, to, for, for example, if you want a courier service for your documents, they will can charge you extra. So, you find that there'll be additional add-ons that you can pay to that visa application, should you wish, if it suits your needs. But the basic flat standard fee is the 348 um, UK pounds. Can we use different bank statements as proof of maintenance? Again, a really, really good question. You can use multiple accounts. You've just got to make sure that your money is, is, is cash savings. It's really important that your money is ca available cash. So in savings accounts and current accounts. Bonds, shares, investments, um, pension funds, unfortunately cannot be used as maintenance. It must be cash funds but if you've got funds in say two or three accounts that's absolutely fine you've just got to make sure that you can calculate that that money has been there across the accounts for the required 28 day period so there is a little bit of math 
that you'll have to do there. A lot of looking at your transaction history, making sure that the balances added up have been there for the last 28 days. But yes, you can use more than one bank account. You can also use funds um, in your own name and your parents' name as well. So if you wanted to use your own personal savings and also your mother or father's account, again, that's perfectly acceptable. But just making sure that you also submit that certificate and your letter of consent as proof of relationship um, for the additional funds. Can I use my spouse's bank account? For a tier four visa application, unfortunately, you cannot use your spouse's bank account. If for tier four students, you must use money in your own name or your parents name or official legal guardian, whereby you have your court court documents to prove that person is your legal guardian. You can't use your spouse's accounts, unfortunately. Your dependents, if you have dependents joining you in the UK, now their funds can be in their own names or your name, but not in your parents' name. So again, it's very careful, be careful with the guidance on um, who can support um, a tier four application and who can support a dependent visa application. If I enroll in a part-time course, can I get a tier four visa which allows my dependents to come along and work? No. Unfortunately, as we said in the presentation, the tier four part-time visa does not allow dependents in the UK. It also does not allow work. So if you are coming to the UK as a part-time tier four student, you would be um, entering um, into a, um, a situation whereby you are not able to work and you are not able to have your dependents with you in the UK, unfortunately. So for senior status LLB, I was told that the emissions teams would contact me regarding the CAS late June, early July. Yeah, so um, as I say, CAS is normally issued towards the end of June, early July, just to make sure that students are using them within that required three month period. Um, so yeah, so you should be able to request your CAS subject to meeting all offer conditions from around late June. Um, if you have any specific questions on that, then um, you can always contact your admissions department directly. Will I, grant, will I be granted a two year visa for a part time programme? Yes, again. So if you're applying for a part time programme, the full programme duration will be put on that CAS. So you will be um, you'll, it'll be a one time visa for you. Do nieces and nephews fall under dependence? No, I'm afraid that they don't. Dependents are defined as um, sort of husbands, wives, civil partners, unmarried partners of more than two years, but you must have been living with that partner. There'll be a requirement to prove that you've been living with your partner for the last two years um, and children under the age of 18. So how long does it take to get a visa, generally speaking? As I've said, so the standard uh, process is 15 working days. I mean, that's an approximation. That's generally quite uh, reliable, 15 working days. But if you've got maybe a complicated application or there are um, various parts of your application that need a little time, some students can wait a little longer, but generally speaking, it's 15 working days. Thanks for your kind words. Very helpful, informative. I'm glad you found this helpful. What's the extra duration after the course that my student visa will be valid to look for a job? Again, really good question. So when you are on your programmes, so you're on your undergraduate, your PhD, your master's programme, your full time course, um, just to be clear, you can work 20 hours per week during term time. And that's um, paid employment that that could be unpaid or paid employment but not self-employment or freelance work unfortunately the tier four rules do not permit self-employment or freelance work in the uk so you must be employed um, so you can work 20 hours per week during term time and then the official vacation periods you'll be able to work full time and you'll also be able to work full time at the end of your program so the end of your program is defined by the end date on your CAS. So by the end date on your CAS, for the remainder of your visa, you will be able to work full time in the UK. Um, and it's normally um, about four months additional leave that you will get at the end of your visa if you are studying an undergraduate, PhD or master's programme. Hopefully that answers your questions. The UK Council for International Student Affairs has really brilliant information and guidance on working in the UK during and after studies. So if that's something that you are uh, really interested in finding out more about, I recommend looking at the UK Council for International Student Affairs website. Um, they also have a really good working blog 
which will tell you about what kind of work you can do in the UK so that you are remaining compliant with the conditions of your visa. That's a really good recommendation to read that. I have a question regarding valid passport period. If my passport is valid until the end of 2021 and my programme lasts till June, will you suggest? No, not necessarily. You, there's no requirement for your passport to cover the duration of your programme. As long as it's valid at the point of application and the point at which a decision is made on your visa application, that is most important. So if you do need to, to renew your passport in the UK, that should not be a problem. There are a few um, countries that do not permit um, you to renew your passport in the UK. There are very, very few. Um, but if you want to, if you think that could be a problem for you, then I recommend checking the embassy website to see if that might affect you. But no, for most students, it is um, possible to renew your passport in the UK if you, when, if and when you need to. Um, can I use a student loan? My savings. Per, my savings, parent savings, whatever. yes, you can use all sorts of combinations. If you've got an educational student loan that covers part of your costs, but you've also got some of that money in savings and some of that money in your parent savings, and that's fine, just use the combination. So just be mindful of the requirements around the educational loan. Again, read our guidance on that, and then making sure that any money you have in your name or your parent's name is saved for the required 28 day periods without falling. That's really, really important. Finances, um, you need to spend some time uh, making sure your documents are in order before you apply. I was offered a conditional admission. Do I need IELTS test before? So if you've got a conditional offer, you need to see what those conditions are. So your offer letter should state what those conditions are. Um, and if you've got any query about how you might be able to meet those conditions, then you should be contacting your admissions team if you're if you're unclear on that okay so as i say um ielts is one particular english language test that most students will use but there may be depending on your circumstances um other ways in which you can prove your english language but if you're unclear on that then you, you should be contacting admissions to make sure you are clear before applying for a visa documents should be within the last 20 31 days yes so you're all financial documentation must be within 31 days, must be issued within the last 31 days, unless, of course, you're using an educational loan or a financial sponsorship letter, in which case they can be up to six months old. OK, so I think we've run out of time. Just want to say thank you very much for coming. You've all had some really fantastic questions. Um, lots of the questions that I've not been able to answer today will be um, you'll be able to get the answers to those questions in our online guidance as uh, so please do read that before you apply for your visa it's very very helpful also the um again the finance checker the maintenance checker is quite a new addition to our online resources it's really really helpful students find it really useful so uh, do have a look at that um, and that will help you um, to, to get your finances in order. And if you have any questions, if you've read all the guidance, you're still confused, or you have something that's quite specific to your situation that you're concerned about and putting in a visa application, then you can always get in touch with us. Again, our contact information will be on our online guide. So feel free to email us if you are worried about anything to do with your visa application. That's no problem at all. Thanks so much. Lovely, kind words. Thank you so much. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you all in September. Thanks very much.